Okay, we should now be live on Facebook. Uh, it's not quite 11 o'clock, so we won't launch into anything just yet, but uh, we might as well start with some introductions. So good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, we have got a special guest with us today, and I will hand over to Rubia to do the introductions. Hi everyone, good morning. So today we're joined by the lovely Sherry. Um, me and Sherry have been on a couple of trips together. So Sherry, do you want to introduce yourself? Tell everyone a little bit about yourself, what you do? Thanks Rubia. Good morning everybody. Um, I'm Sherry. Um, I've been a nurse my whole life um, and I currently work in a school. And uh, I got involved with different travel back in 2015 when I wanted to go on an adventure and sort of leave my family behind and do something other than, you know, talk children. And uh, got involved with a charity called Action Aid. And uh, my first trip was to Mozambique with Action Aid, which was organised by Different Travel. And since then, I've been completely hooked. I've been on uh, four Action Aid trips and, uh, and an additional trip. Uh, which was with my school that Different Travel also organised for us, which was fantastic. And um, yeah, um, that's me really. I still work. I'm still going to go on plenty more trips. Um, it's just amazing. So which destinations have you you been to, Sherry? I know we were in Cambodia together. We were. My first was Mozambique. Uh, second was Cambodia. Um, then Kathmandu in Nepal. Um, the fourth one was... Uh, in Rwanda, which included a Uga trip to Uganda as well. And the last one, which was last year for the school, went, was to the Gambia. That's amazing. Um, so today we're going to be talking and sharing our memories of Cambodia. So um, I'm going to pass over to Jill, who's going to introduce us to, to the country a little bit. Hi, good morning. Um, yes, I've been on all of um, Sherry's trips, four trips with ActionAid, and one of them was to Cambodia. And I think Cambodia is one of my favourite destinations. Um, so just a little background on Cambodia. Um, now has a population of just over 16 million, and the capital city is Phnom Penh, which we always visit on our trips to um, Cambodia. We start and usually finish there, and it includes a bit of sightseeing. Um, Angkor Wat is obviously a highlight of any trip to Cambodia and it's the largest um, religious monument in the world. Um, the um, Angkor Wat translate, translate sorry, a city of temples and um, it's quite a fascinating place as, it, as I've already said stretching over a large area and the temples vary considerably and it's our final destination for our exciting open challenge um, next year. So, um, Cherie, we've been to Cambodia. Um, it was, I think, the second trip you did with us and with me. <laughs> um, what What are the, your favourite things about Cambodia? Gosh, I have to say, there are so many, many things. I mean, I, I, I was slightly concerned because it was my second trip that I wouldn't be as blown away as I was with my first trip. Um, but I needn't have worried because it was just amazing um i think the things that stand out most for me are just how incredibly friendly the people are i mean i you know it was i felt very safe there um it's a very colorful country i loved the the rural countryside so i'm not really a towny kind of girl um although phnom penh itself is quite um an education in terms of its sort of infrastructure and um, i'll never forget all the, the telegraph wires um that sort of just look like a big load of spaghetti that someone just held across the held across the city and it kind of lands where it lands whether it's on a post or on the ground is neither here nor there um the food is incredible um, the traffic is like well goodness the traffic's unreal um how anyone gets anywhere is beyond me um but, but the little tuk-tuks that you ride in are just immensely good fun and i certainly enjoyed enjoyed that um it, it was lovely obviously we were there to do a project with action aid uh which was with a school um it's my first school project um so very different from the mozambique project which was uh involved with a center for domestic violence this was building a new school 
um, and we were starting pretty much from scratch. There were a few foundations that had been dug um, and uh, we worked with the children um, pretty much all day. When they weren't in the classrooms, they were on the building site uh, with us, so we were having to be really careful, but they were, they were so enthusiastic. I think the people there were amazingly friendly. Um, mm. I think sometimes people think that, because I think, it, you know, certainly as, as the British or even Westerners, we're very good at going somewhere um, less well developed um, and telling people how we know best. And I was quite concerned that we wouldn't be welcome, but actually so not like that at all. Uh, mm. they're, they're absolutely amazing people. I've, we all felt incredibly welcome. Um, and it was just um, a week of sheer happiness, really, and exuberance by not just the children, but that was really infectious for all of us. Um, do, you, do you remember the school we were working at was within it, in, within the village, wasn't it? Yeah. And the parents would come and watch, and um, and then on towards the end of the week, do you remember they invited us to look around the village and took took us to their houses. Mm. And, it's, it's amazing. It's that getting totally immersed in that rural life. I, I really feel it. part of it, don't you? The part of the community when we were there, like you say, seeing the kids every morning, as soon as we'd get to site, you'd have your little welcome party waiting for you. <laughs> and everyone was just, like you say, so happy and so involved that we were there. And it wasn't a case of us coming, landing, doing the work and leaving. You're very much part of that culture and the community and you get to learn more about the Cambodian culture as well I certainly like you know a lot before you get there but you it's completely indescribable how involved and how attached you become to the people on these trips I think I think yeah, no, I'm, go on I was going to say one of the most memorable and I think most emotional because I think you don't kind of think about these things if you've never been anywhere like that you know if we've all been tucked away in our cozy homes here you know relatively well off and you know we don't have to worry about tea, where tea is coming from but, but uh, I think these trips can be really emotional but in a good way um, and certainly arriving at the school on that first day where the whole it, we had to walk down a track which was probably a couple of hundred yards long um, which was just lined with children and the teachers and it was and they were all singing and clapping and smiling and and lovely and you just I have to say I, you know I'm a nurse we're as hard as nails us nurses but honestly it just it just really makes you feel very emotional and really welcome and they're priceless moments that I don't think you get anywhere else ever you really really don't I think you go you go on these trips and you meet incredible people um, who are amazing um, with so much less than we have and coping with adversity um, and, and yet you you come back a different that sounds really cheesy to say but you come back I came back after my first trip a totally different person mm -hmm. to the one that left these shores um, you know you think you know how hard people have it um, but you don't and you what is so incredible, and we could learn so much from, and I've said this to all sorts of people that I'm probably boring everybody who's listening now who's heard it all before, but I think we can learn so much from these people who are so positive, despite the fact that they don't have necessarily knowledge of having tea tonight, mm. um, how incredibly positive and resilient um, and just, you know, whole people that they really are. I know they don't have a choice, but you can be miserable about sorting out your life in that situation, or you can be positive um, and not miserable. And they are very not miserable, um, you know, and don't want people like us to feel sorry for them because that, and, and we don't, because that's not what we're there for. We're just going to help. But I think it, it certainly, it's really hard to put into words. I know when I got back from my first trip and I went into work to the office and everyone said, how was it? How was it? And I actually, I, I wanted to try and speak, but I just couldn't speak. It actually just makes you want to cry, but in a good way, because you're just so affected um, by, just by seeing things that you, you never knew about and by meeting the most 
amazing, amazing people. I think we could, I think everyone should go and volunteer somewhere in one of these countries, because I think, you know, this, this country in part has lost its resilience. I think in part it's lost its humanity. And I think all of us need a bit of a reminder, um, you know, of, of what life is like beyond these shores and how much strength we could learn from from those people uh, obviously I'm you know casting aspersions that you know when people fall over here they lie down and look around and say well who's going to pick me up but you know if someone falls down over there um, in those countries they just pick themselves up and get on with it um, and I think we could learn a lot from from them because there, there's so many positive things that, that I think we've lost a bit as a society over here absolutely i think given with cambodia cambodia was my first trip um and like you say it does change you as a person after going and experience that but with cambodia especially given their recent history and given everything that they've been through when you learn about that and i think it's important for us to to ch touch on that a little bit with um, i mean the atrocities that happened there were in the late 70s it's within living memory it's not something a million years ago and you know so many people were massacred and you can see it in the faces of people you walk around the streets and there aren't people over a certain age just because of the sheer amount of number of people mm -hmm. who who passed away i mean i think there's um 50 of the population is younger than 15 years old mm -hmm. and that's just mm -hmm. such a horrible horrible thing to think about and i think um 60% is younger than, sorry, younger than 30 mm. is 60%. So to go to a society and see all these amazing young kids running around, but there's just no older generation there. And then hearing the stories when we were at the village, we had people talking to us and, you know, the communication wasn't great, but you could kind of get stuff across and we had people translating for us and when they told you the stories of what they've lived through it yeah. it really did i know there was lots of tears mm. tears of happiness tears of sh sadness shed throughout that trip and i mean sherry we we went to the um killing fields and s21 what what did you take away from that and do you think it's important to kind of go and visit these types of places I think it's hugely important. I think I think it's one of the one of the things I will never ever forget in my whole life. Um, and I, I mean, how it makes you feel is really hard to put into words. I mean, we went to the S Twenty One Museum first, um, which had been a school before it had been taken over by Pol Pot's henchmen, of course, and used as a prison and a torture centre. And um, it was just it was brilliantly set up. I'm trying, I'm trying not to put my feelings in too much because because you don't want to put people off. But I think it's really it is just such a terrible place. And yet I'm so glad I went, which don't seem quite right in the same sentence. But I think you I think a lot of us, although we ended, we started off sort of going around together, um, you know, in ones or, two, or in twos or threes or groups, you end up actually just going around on your own um and and just sort of oh gosh how do i put it really just listening and 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 soaking in just to how awful the the history was and the fact that that so many people were killed something like three or four million people wasn't it something like 25 percent right? it's a third of the population i think third yeah population. Something like, i mean it was a humongous amount wasn't it Mm -hmm. um, of just just completely innocent people who who were who were murdered, weren't they, for for being educated or wearing glasses? That doesn't look good for us, for does it? Look, like, <laughs> <laughs> if we lived there, I was thinking that. That. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but I um yeah, I think it was awful, and the fact that there that it happened in my lifetime. I mean, I think I would mm. I was would have been a middle teenager about what was it i can't remember the years but i think i was about 17 18 75 I, to 70 yeah hmm. and i didn't i don't know why i didn't really know about it 
And then that's how I feel about it. Yeah. You've heard of Pol Pot, but I yes. felt a shame that I didn't know more about it. And and like you said, being in the country and 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 learning more about their history, you really appreciate what these people have gone through and their yeah. resilience and mm. and appreciate, you know, how how tough they are really. And it's yeah, it, it's in, immensely important to understand the history as well. Uh, uh, without a doubt and I, I think that I think you have to take your hats off to, to the people who are who are living who yeah who are yeah. are li you know are living pretty reasonably um what's the word not happily but they're functioning aren't they I mean after such you know, it's such a tragedy. I mean, I was reading yesterday because I thought I'd better just gen up a bit more. <laughs> so I don't remember all the facts of five trips. But um, there there are something like 23,000 killing fields, aren't there, in Cambodia. There were 23 areas where there was mass extinction. And, and you just, we can't imagine how that could ever happen anywhere. And, and and going to the obviously to the biggest killing field that we went to outside Phnom Penh to visit um, was also, and, and I'm sure you guys remember it. You know, the, the first thing that happens. I mean, it, it's it's been very well put together, and, and obviously is it is is set up as a, a commemoration and a sort of remembrance area. So it's very respectful. Um, but but the sort of the first sign that says, "Please watch where you walk," um, because when it rains. Um, bones of people or clothing of people might just come to the surface and I will never forget that um, and and also the tree where they used to kill the children at the tree I don't want to put people off Cambodia with all this but because it sounds absolutely terrible but I think I'm so glad I went and I think we, we have to keep going to these places um, in order to make sure that that sounds cheesy as well, but in order to make sure they just don't happen again. And I just don't know why I didn't know so much about it I when I was a teenager. Yeah, I think learning about it while we were there kind of added to the trip. It made yeah. what we were doing seem all the more worthwhile. Now our open challenge involves a project as well. Mm. And I think it's, you're not just going and seeing and leaving it's that you're doing something to help and help them move on like we were on a, a school build and the existing school building we saw and it wasn't fit for purpose but by the end of the week seeing the kids all over the playground which we built with our hands was it's just such a joyous occasion and I think even though there's a sad side of it, there's such, it's such an incredibly beautiful country with beautiful people and there's that element of it as well. And like you say, people know it because of Angkor Wat and that's our end journey on our open challenge. But there's just so much more to the country as well. It's not just buildings in a jungle. It, it's just, it's the whole, whole approach, I think. Absolutely yeah the, the countryside is beautiful and and the, you see the, their way of life their daily routine and the photo you know just looking out of the coach on the way to the projects is just amazing so many photo opportunities i'm just it's sharing really some funny. pictures of the landscape yeah. and this is just typical of the area and the types of places on our trek you'll be walking through as well I think so Absolutely. you've got your paddy fields you've got amazing views and, and it really is that green <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. it really yeah. is it really is that green yeah. do you remember yeah. this path that we had to navigate on one of our I think we we were all on the back of the pickup truck trying oh, to get through this yes. crate <laughs> yeah. that was on the way to see a project wasn't it yeah it was yeah and then this was literally just around the corner from the school mm. and it you, you're just totally immersed in the countryside aren't you and i think yeah. on our open challenge mm. that's something that you'll experience even more um, yeah, I think, I think Sarah's going to talk a little bit about it's, that, aren't you? Certainly, yes. I mean, I, I think, you know, that, to actually get involved in the in the countryside, doing this trek through the farmland, through the jungles and, and through all the sort of different different temples. And it's not the main touristy ones, but the ones that are more off the beaten track is, is something that I, 
I'm really excited about. I've, I've not actually done this trek myself yet. Um, I have been to Cambodia, but I've not done this trek and I, I really would, I'm hoping to go next year. It does sound absolutely incredible. Um, so what we've kind of put together for this open challenge is, as, as Ruby has mentioned, it's a little bit of both. It's a five day trek, so not too strenuous. It's a sort of a moderate trek. So we're not kind of scaling huge high altitude peaks or anything too extreme. Um, and we are staying in local homestays. So you've got an element of sort of comfort. You have a proper roof over your head at night and just actually staying in the homestays. This is something we do on quite a few of our treks in, in different parts of the world. It's another great way to actually meet the local community as we've already obviously said so much about for Cambodia. Um, but you're, you're living in a real village and you've got real people sort of next to you and around you. And yes, there's a little bit of a language barrier, but the guides are really great at translating and there's always a way of communicating and just uh, you know being part of their life I guess even for that short period of time that you're there they in turn are benefiting because they're directly benefiting from our stay they're obviously being being paid for the fact that we're staying in their village and they're cooking our food and looking after us so it really is sort of a win-win situation the, these homestays that, that we do um, but I think the trek just sounds incredible because it's so much more than just a trek yes there'll be the amazing scenery beautiful landscape but you get to see some real hidden gems that you wouldn't otherwise get to see. There's a sort of a couple of temples that have only recently been discovered, that are literally buried right in the jungle that we will get to see that you can only access by four or five hours of walking on foot. So that's why we're going to be able to get in there and, and visit these places. Um, one night we actually stay in, a, in a, a monastery as well, like a pagoda, a, a Buddhist centre. So that's like another aspect to it. Uh, the other nights were in the homestays, as I've already mentioned. And then, of course, at the end, we get to visit the temples of Angkor Wat because we can't take you to, to Cambodia without including that. So we have a, we have one day that will be all organised and you go around with the guide to visit the kind of key highlights. And then there's another day at the end that's more free for you to just go back and explore at your own pace and, and sort of really take things in. But then, of course, another aspect, the second bit of the uh, the challenge, as it were, is the community project that we'll do at the end of the trek. So there'll be a couple of days where we're going to be staying again, staying with a local community. And um, it's not going to be as full on as, as the Action Aid project that Sherry's mentioned, because we are only there for two days. So we won't be building a whole school or anything quite that dramatic. But we will be getting involved and stuck in with probably about painting, decorating, refurbishment, gardening, all of those kind of tasks that will be discuss with the community to see what it is that they want us to do at the time that's something that we're, we're, we're very passionate about on these tracks we don't kind of go in and say right this is what we're we're here to do we talk to them and we see how they can best use our our skills for those couple of days and uh and we'll therefore give you more information about that nearer the time once, once things are firmed up but they are an absolute highlight of any of these sort of combination challenges that we do that chance to really meet the local community work alongside them and uh and just to get stuck in um so i think you know uh that that's something that um you know well obviously we have talked quite a little bit about before but all of us here today have have been involved in those projects and and i think i'm sure you'd agree is is a real highlight um i don't know There's absolutely anything, you know. i think it's important to say the dates of the trip as well it's 25th of, of september yeah. to 5th of october next year absolutely. so we are taking bookings for that already um and we've had some interest as well um, and it's based around the cm reap area um mm. i know our project was further south and you've got Phnom Penh as well, but this will be in the Siem Reap area, um, which is obviously famous for, for Angkor Wat. Mm. And we mentioned some of the temples. I think it's um, only right for me to to share some photos Absolutely. to show how incredible mm -hmm. um, the area is. So that's obviously the main main event. And this was taken on at our trip, actually, Sherry. So I remember that photograph. I think you oh, took I'm it. sure you remember yeah. how hot it was that day. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah, that's one of my pictures. But it, it it's such a, a huge, I don't think I appreciated how huge the area was. And we didn't just visit, we obviously visited some of the more, more famous sites, but mm. there's just so much, isn't there? Those trees were amazing. Mm. And the carvings were just awesome weren't they i mean you mm. could spend yeah. weeks exploring those temples and you would be yeah. seeing a different place each day if, if that's what you, you wanted to do it really is quite amazing the yeah. scale is unbelievable it really is yeah. and and all of these photos it's um it's one of those places you can't take a bad photo every corner you go around there's yeah. another amazing <laughs> site it's just wow factor isn't it the whole way through yeah. it really is 
Yeah. But I think, like you mentioned, Sarah, on this particular trip, it's the more off the beaten route mm. ones which are really excited. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, know, there's the um, pronunciation here we go, <laughs> Sra Damre or Elephant Pond. It's easier to say, which, like you say, has only recently been discovered. It's in the middle it's of nowhere. Incredible. It's very inaccessible mm. by by car or anything, so you're not going to get the throngs of tourists. Mm. And it's literally larger than life stone sculptures of elephants and lions and all sorts and it just sounds incredible I mean can you imagine just walking through a jungle and then coming across these ruins from yeah. thousands of years ago it's it's incredible. just yeah. insane to think about really absolutely yeah I think it's yeah. amazing to to wonder how on earth they managed to build them I, I mean because obviously we are talking an awfully long time ago you know, without drills and cranes and, you know, they're, they're just... I mean, they're just incredible, aren't Actually, they? Just the extent of the and the the, the the way that civilization there at that point in time was just so far, so much more developed than anything in Europe at that time. Mm -hmm. Basically, you know, it, it was just leading the world, I guess, at its time. And how you look at all these remains now and just think, my God, how did they do that? But mm. yeah, it's just stunning, incredible. And then, for, and then for everyone to have forgotten they were even there for so long. <laughs> yeah. Amazing, it's just, it? they just got <laughs> overgrown with jungle yeah. it's incredible mm. and they're still discovering new yeah. and it's getting bigger and bigger because yeah. the original anchor what that they discovered and then they're using like special technology with planes flying over looking yeah. through yeah. the vegetation and they're discovering actually it's so much bigger than we ever thought it was and they're discovering more and more each time mm. and it's yeah yeah it's it's just it's hard to fathom the size of it i think and mm. i think on the open challenge you'll get to appreciate that more because you are you're not just sat in a car driving from place to place yeah. you're, you're actually walking through yeah. and immersing yourself in the countryside i think yeah. no, absolutely. Is, it, is it a wonder of the world yeah should it be a wonder of the world it's a world heritage site it isn't is it world i think world heritage definitely yeah yeah but probably yeah. it's so massive eventually Absolutely. it could be one of the certainly however many wonders of the world there are now if it's not already it definitely should be absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> but, but no, do you I mean... think you've the, those are definitely some of the trip highlights mm. and i think probably another highlight will be because you're staying with the local people the food is going to be a highlight Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> the food experience which we always try and make a bit special mm. but yes yeah, especially staying with local people and um, mm. the food we've always had cooked in Cambodia by the local people has been sensational on our projects at lunchtime. Yeah. Um, I've got a picture favorite. of the project lunch. Yeah. And I think this is made on an open fire in the middle of nowhere. And it's quite basic, but it was so delicious. I can't, mm. the, the vegetables were fresh and there's a bit of fried fish and mountains of rice. It was just... Um, do you, remember, do you remember the peanut, it, like peanut salad thing oh. that they did? Oh um, yeah, on the on the building site, the locals, the most amazing. Oh, it was just mm -hmm. I could eat that every day of my life. It, <laughs> it was so like good. eating restaurant food at lunchtime. Yeah. The food, actually, the lunchtime food was just the best food ever. Probably the best food I've ever had anywhere in the world <laughs> on all of the trips and all the. Food we always the trips, we always we encourage them to give us real local food mm. and um i think mm. you've got a picture of it haven't you Rubia? when they went out catching our our lunch one day yeah um this was another trip. warning this was to anyone who's a bit squeamish for the next <laughs> couple of pictures but this was lunch this wasn't on our trip i think this was on was one of jill's on other ones an earlier cambodia one they went out around the, the paths collecting red ants for our red ant curry for lunch, <laughs> which was quite an experience. They taste like of um, as, um, acetic acid, quite sort of sharp. Mm. Tasty. But, um, <laughs> they get caught in your teeth as well. <laughs> I remember the ants eating me. I didn't eat uh, yeah. any of the ants because yeah, I had yeah. to dig up an ant hill <laughs> and we like discovered it on the playground. <laughs> and so, yeah. Yeah. But that's another local delicacy, isn't there? You're going to show. Yeah, yeah. So again, look away, look away, <laughs> look away if you are a bit squeamish. But this is a delicacy over in in Cambodia, which is fried tarantula. 
so I'm going to stop sharing that because that makes me creeps me out as well but (laughs) some people are brave enough to try it I I remember one of the places had a big like a fishbowl wasn't it full of live ones and you could kind of choose your dinner but I think it's it's going back to the history after what they went through it kind of that was the only food available for people and then it it's something that they they kept kept within the diet and Mm. yeah if you're brave enough you can try but um some people actually of- uh, do that as an added element to the challenge. If you're doing the, sort of a lot of people take part in our open challenges to raise money for a charity. And quite often people have done something like that as an extra sort of, if you sponsor, you know, if I get my sponsorship target up another £500, I'll eat a spider. <laughs> it's a really good way to raise that extra bit of money. You wouldn't catch me doing it though, not for a million pounds. <laughs> I think I'll just write the cheque myself. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that to not eat it. <laughs> quite eclectic isn't it there's Chinese influences yeah, there's quite a lot, a lot of Chinese influences yeah, a lot of there's the lovely seafood mm. we lovely seafood didn't we oh yes the camp pot gorgeous yes, yes, really absolutely. you were near really the coast I think on that trip camp. weren't you yeah we're right on the coast then we're mm. on the river estuary mm. we have to, yeah it you've got quite, quite a different. bit of You've got quite a bit of French influence as well, being obviously mm. having historically yeah, been part yeah. of French Indochina. Um, you'll sort of get your baguettes and cheese and croissants for breakfast. Fresh and... croissants every morning. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's the same right. parts, isn't it? And the peppercorn as well. Do you remember the the green peppercorn that was in absolutely everything and it was just so yeah. delicious? Yeah, that's right. I think we yeah. all came home with us. The food's fascinating. Yeah, we came home with a, with a sack load of can pot pepper, didn't we, all of us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can still do that. Can you can you bring pepper back on your on a plane? I think you can bring like sort of dried peppercorns. Right. I think you dried do okay peppercorns. Take them back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as long as it's yeah. Like yeah. a fresh living plant or anything. Yeah. So. Mm. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. Um, so I think, you know, sort of just to, just to, to sum up, because um, uh, we where we have been chatting for about half an hour here already, we do get carried away when we get on one of our favourite subjects, don't we? But um, I mean, you've got the, just to summarise this trip, obviously the combined highlights of the trek and the project. I don't know if there's any other sort of specific memories or highlights from Cambodia that, that Sherry, you want to just touch upon? Anything else you wanted to? to... Well, well, <laughs> I thought long and hard about this yesterday. And uh, and the first thing that came into my head was in fact Jill in her oh. pink in her pink steel toe capped boot <laughs> building site, looking distinctly like Florence from the Magic Roundabout. Um, <laughs> um, the highlights. Oh gosh, there were so many. Mm. I think the the whole this sounds a bit like a plug for different travel which I suppose it is really but I think going on going on a trip with different travel you just feel so safe um and so looked after that actually from the minute I leave my house it's just absolute joy um even though there are always challenges um I mean that's why we go because we challenge ourselves and things are hard sometimes but in a good way um, I think you've, I know in the small print, it says this itinerary may change. Not everything goes to plan. And indeed, that is the case when you go to these countries. And we have experienced some of those things that don't always go to plan, like missing a flight. Um, so instead of flying us from Phnom Penh to Siem Reap, uh, we go in a coach, um, which is fine because it really isn't that far in theory um so you end up not on a not on a plane but you're on a coach and you pull up to somewhere that looks just like a sort of a hovel (laughs) and the guides who are are the guides in in Cambodia were just phenomenal run into this place come back out and you find yourself supping white wine and cooked quail's eggs on a trip that you weren't expecting to have. It was um, an incredible journey, wasn't it? We had so much fun on that coach it ride. Awesome. And then I also, these are all the funny things I'm telling you about now, but the, we, one evening we went out for dinner in a coach and it had rained an enormous amount and the road was complete mud. 
was so much mud. I had no idea how even the coach got to where we were meant to be. But once we got there, we couldn't actually get out of the bus because there was so much mud. But no, that's not a problem either. So they bring up the tuk-tuk from who knows where. We have to swing off the coach without landing on the ground into the tuk-tuk. And we are then whizzed through the trees and off to the hotel. And we come back and do the same way. Um, the just the sheer camaraderie of the group that you're with you know Ruby, Rubio has mentioned it already but we've made friends for life from um from those those trips I've got friends for life that um that I know every trip that I go on in the future there will always be people I've met before that I'm really really going to enjoy spending time with um as well as the fact that I guess we all feel just a little bit good about ourselves, that we've done something good for someone else. Let's, let's not hide it. We do feel good about that. Um, you know, and I think the fact that you see what it is you're doing and it makes so much sense because you uh, because you've been immersed in the culture of that country, whether it's Cambodia or, you know, we had the same issues in Nepal because it was a year after the earthquake. Um, again, in Rwanda, we learned about the genocide. And so I think all the all the things that you do just mean so much more. Um, but yeah, I think the, the biggest highlight is it just makes your heart so much bigger. And, <laughs> and, and so I, nice. Yeah, mm. you, you just, I don't know, just makes you glow. I've got a picture here, which I don't <laughs> know if you'll be able to see, but, but we got paired up in the school in Cambodia. Got it, one, yeah, I can share one, it. Have so you got this? I don't know if you can see that. Um, yes. Let me. Hi, girl. Um, yes. Um, that was so picture, moving. The picture mm. that, I've got that she drew of me with my wheelbarrow, <laughs> moving, moving bricks, and it's got a lovely message on the back. I always keep these things. I've got my scarf that I was presented with. You know, all these things. You get them out of the drawer, and it reminds you. And just all the amazing people. And I've I do got have stuff. a picture of the two of you. I've got stuff that that um that I will always keep. Oh, yeah. Look. And do you know what? I spent all week pronouncing her name and I never got it right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, What's your name? And she'd say, Shrey Peak. And I'd say, Oh, Shrey Peak. And she'd go, No, 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 Shrey Peak. <laughs> no, no, no. Never got it. Um but but just just so much so much warmth and stuff that goes around you see the absolute best of people uh, mm -hmm. and i think that that's awesome i'm so sorry about the scruffy stuff behind me but my this is my little home office and i've got african pictures and you know i've got stuff around me i've got oh i've got this <laughs> that's from anchor Watt. okay <laughs> As a present from Alan, thank you, Alan. Alan is watching us. After him on the day, when he was very well on the way out there. Um, but <laughs> honestly, just memories. Yeah, memories. highlights are just just all of it. Just mm. memories. You know, if if any of you out there are thinking about going, do it. Mm. Do it. You'll never ever regret it because it's just brilliant. And I'll certainly be doing it as many times as I can possibly do. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And well let's said. hope it's not too long well before said. we can all get back out doing it again. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you so much for joining us, Sherry. It's been lovely to hear all your memories. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's uh, hopefully inspired, inspired other people to come and join us and take part and go to Cambodia because it is a brilliant place to go. So, um, yeah. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. Well, I mean, we'll see you all next week. Next week, we're sort of. Um, kind of moving away from the destinations. And we're going to go back to talking about uh, training tips. Um, for anyone, I mean, for example, you might be listening to this and thinking, oh, I'd love to do that, but I'm not sure I could do a five-day trek or something like that. We're just going to be talking through some of our tips and help and guidance on how to get started, really, and how, how to make sure you are fit for that trip, whether it be a, a moderate five-day trek like this one or whether you're taking on a, a bigger challenge like scaling Kilimanjaro or trekking to Everest Base Camp with us. Um, Lexi will be joining us. Lexi, Lexi is certainly our, our sort of a queen bee when it comes to training tips and all things to do with that. So we'll be, uh, we'll be back on next Thursday at the same time talking about all things training, how to get yourself ready. But uh, in the meantime, have a lovely bank holiday weekend. Thank you for joining us and uh, we'll say goodbye for now. <laughs> So bye. 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 bye.